Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. In this video, we're going to spend some time riding in the cab of a John Deere Class 9 S790 Combine. This 543 horsepower, 400 bushel machine might better be called a dust bind in this video because the combine is harvesting soybeans in drought conditions. There hasn't been rain in western Kentucky for about two months and the soybeans are coming in early. It's time to harvest and the combines are kicking up a bunch of dust. Let's head out to the field to see these big machines with 45 foot wide McDon Draper heads bringing in the 2019 crop. Combine under all this dust. <laughs> That's how you get covered. Always. <laughs> How's the harvest going? Uh, a few breakdowns so far, nothing major. Pretty good. So we got five S790s rolling out here with 45 foot McDonald's heads. That's right. A lot of beans and a lot of dust. So when you're harvesting beans like this, uh, how many acres a day are you trying to get? I know you're just kind of on your second day here right now. Uh, about oh, well, 200 would be good if I can make that happen. But it's hard to make that happen. <laughs> So does it go a little bit faster than wheat because there's a, a lower yield or? Yes and no. Uh, see, we got some green spots we're having to go around actually. Uh, like, again, it depends on the moisture and all of that. Uh, here's our sprayer tracks that everybody was looking at back in August. Again, really not a big impact on yield at all. Just no, when you're out here, you spray it and get as much of the crop set up as you can. So when you're in a line of combines like this, is it this does make it a little more challenging to see everything that's going on? Or uh, it depends on the direction of the wind. <laughs> if it was blowing from you know behind us, ahead of us, I would wouldn't be able to see the one in front of me. That makes it really hard. Kind of dangerous. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing that, as you can see, Matt's on auto guidance here, so the combine is controlling itself right now in its automated mode. But of course, it's important that you're up here to keep an eye on everything. So I see there's still a few yellow leaves and green leaves out there, but it's uh, yeah. again, it's so hot and dry. We it's been over 95 degrees almost every day for a month. That's yeah. imagine you start losing pods and things or beans out of the pot if you don't start cutting. Yeah, it's actually 10% moisture. Uh, when you get into spots that are a little greener, it'll jump up to like yeah. 14, 15, but still uh, pretty 10%. dry. Yeah. So right now you're kind of hovering there to 50 bushel, 45 bushel the average there. Yep, somewhere in there. So is that normal for double crop beans, just kind of a, a decent year when you're I'd at that? I'd say that's uh, average, yeah. Uh, really good would be 60, 70, you know. But, uh, can't complain about 48. And we just had an extremely dry August and yeah. September and not helpful to the beans, but still doing very well. So how fast are we traveling out here right now? How about four miles an hour. And you like the uh, FD-145 drapers for the for the beans? Uh, it works really good. Uh, you know, it does a good job cutting, uh, feeds nice. 
No, I know a question. It always happens in wheat, and it definitely happens in soybeans. I know people are going to be concerned about the speed of the reel. So, how do you determine what you're setting the reel speed at when you're harvesting this crop? I set it to my ground speed. Basically, you don't want it to push the plant forward, and you don't want it to drag it backwards. You want it to go kind of like just think, think of it as a tire going. You know, the speed that you're going, and that's how I set the speed of it. Now, the height and the you know fore and aft position of it really have to run it low because there's wheat stubble down there that we have to get to to keep the cutter bar cleaned off otherwise it pushes up the wheat straw and you can't cut it yeah, hopefully people can see that down there between the rows but there's the wheat stubble and that doesn't affect the harvest at all I mean you're just you're cutting that wheat stubble and running it right through the combine but you do have to get the sickles down there to slice yeah. everything off yeah you got to cut the beans on the ground to get them off which means you also have to cut the rest of the wheat. So that's why it's so dusty is the straw. Of course, the beans are dusty themselves, but the, the straw makes it twice as bad. But then when the combine's putting that back out in the field, you're putting a good mulch and more nutrients back onto the ground for the winter. Yeah, it's got 100% uh, coverage over the ground. You can't see the ground at all. And you don't find that you're really losing them, I and I don't hear any pods or, be I mean, the beans themselves actually in the windshield really or at all. Or uh, every now and then you will. You get into really tall beans, then uh, you have to raise the reel up. I mean, it, it'll actually start pulling it, pulling it back over top of it. You don't want that. So. so now you also have the. Um, the clean elevator and things we can see on the camera here on the uh, combine. Yeah. Yep. So it's pretty clean, I mean, considering all the, the wheat straw that's out there. And yeah, we actually run a uh, special screen uh, on the sieve for beans. It's got, uh, instead of adjustable louvers, it has holes, small, uh, like holes drilled in it, just big enough for a soybean to fit through. So everything, it's got a really clean sample with that type of screen. Now, can you also see how many satellites are working on this combine from the screen? Or? Yep. Uh, let's see. Right now we're tracking 23 satellites. So 23 satellites are helping Matt make a perfect 45-foot swath with this header and the one in front of him. And you can see it's just completely automated. And then the combine also uh, is using automation to harvest this crop to adjust to it. Yep. So right now we're going through some pretty good dry uh, material here at 10%, but we can see just ahead of us still a few leaves out there. But the combine will adjust to that condition. Again, here we can see we're at 10% moisture, even though there's still some leaves out there, so it's time to get this crop in. Ideally, if it wasn't so dry, I mean, what, what are you normally harvesting at? Uh, about 10 to 12 is usual moisture on beans. Uh, any uh, wetter than that, they're really tough to cut. You know, you, you have a lot of trouble. Yeah, we can see that wheat straw down there in the draper as it's cutting. Matt is on loading on the go with a John Deere 9420R pulling a Kinsey 1105 grain cart and the auger emptying out at 3.8 bushels per second from the 400 bushel bin. This is right behind Matt here. You can see it's completely full of beans at the moment. So do you, um, when you're unloading on the go like this, you determine the speed that the tractor's at? I mean, it's pretty much understood, but you're not, there's no computer program here controlling that tractor. No, he's driving it. Uh, he's just maintaining his speed, and then I'll speed up and slow down to, to load it. Here we can see that Matt's got to keep an eye on this, because this cart's pretty full, so he's going to top it off and make sure it's loaded up to head to the truck. And the tractor has a scale 
in it that uh, allows the operator in there to know how much the cart weighs. But especially when you're way out here in the field, you're going to fill that cart as much as you can, and then it's up to the cart operator to fill the truck. Matt's going to top the cart off here. It's turning the combine around and you're loaded. And as the header comes across the crop here, we can start seeing the beans come back into the 400 bushel grain bin. Spot uh, just ahead of us are two more of the S790s right there, and then another one is across the field harvesting the last section there. Somebody's hiding out on this, I guess. <laughs> We're probably in that cloud of dust somewhere. Yeah. Here you can see the belts on the draper head and the sickles. They start slicing the beans and carry the crop right over here into the feeder house where the rotor inside threshes out the beans. As Matt starts taking a full swath here, we can turn around and start to see the crop really pour out of the auger here. does it take to fill the combine up? Does it take eight, five to eight minutes or so in this kind of condition? Or? Uh, it means it takes a little longer. Corn, yeah, it's like seven minutes. Uh, I think something like that. But, uh, That's like 230 bushels for yeah. 50. Yeah, it means it takes a little longer. I'd say 10 to 15 minutes to fill up. This is the challenge of the dust. We had our two combines over to the left and another one across the field that way. But there's another one hiding here in the dust right there. So these Soybeans are planted on a 30 inch row by the Horse uh, Panther air drills. Back in June when you were cutting wheat, these were planted. You notice that you're cutting them at an angle though. They were planted in one angle and now you're coming across them this way at another angle. Uh, yeah. What is the purpose of that? Uh, it just helps feed uh, off the cutter bar better. Um, again, you got a lot of straw down there so it's tough to feed it onto the belts. And it helps if you go at an angle that keeps the cutter bar cleaned off, you know. Instead of all one row going in one spot of the header, you know. I can see it's a little tangled here too, so you're kind of going against the grain to lift it. Yep. And I imagine also if you were following those rows, then you'd be wearing the same sickles at the same point throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. Over 
go straight across this field, man, please, see what it looks like. See if you can do anything this field over here, man. Go ahead and explain. I know we've cut that a little bit by the trucks. Maybe, maybe a little more, but up along that road, I was looking across there, it was pretty green. So when you finish the field, I guess you top off the grain carts here to try to get a truck headed out, or? Yeah, we'll just get the combines empty and try to get them a load before we move to the next section or whatever. Like this field here, I don't know if we'll be able to cut it or not. It's kind of kind of wet. Driver and every truck up there, Jose. Oh, I think it's a four drivers, honestly. It makes it tough though at this time of year when it's just so dry and they're not all 100%. I guess that we had a rain about a week ago, I guess that yeah. activated them again. And yeah, they greened them back up. They're the ones that were still alive, halfway alive. Because normally we'd still have at least a week till harvest. Yeah. So when you're out here in corn, there are four Kinsey 1105 carts and four 9420Rs. Yep. How many um, does it take to keep up with the five combines and soybeans? Right now, they're just running two. We may add a sixth combine. Um, if we do that, we'll probably add a third, but uh, we just need two right now. It looks like, again, in corn, you've got multiple trucks always lined up and ready to roll. A little bit slower pace for the truck drivers too. Yeah, they get a little break with beans. <laughs> I had a question in the comments section. Someone asked why are the semi trucks just not driving along beside you out in the field? And I think this field right here kind of gives a prime example. There's a lot of bumps well, and dips that these trucks wouldn't probably fare too well through. A lot of washouts, it's really rough. Sprayer ruts. Sprayer ruts. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have any front ends or rear ends or <laughs> axles be broken. It'd be, it'd be a bad deal. Plus, just getting traction. Sometimes, if one of those trucks even gets a little up in the air, it's stuck. Yep. So, I see over there one of the combines has gone across the road and is testing out that field. How many acres um, or what size field are you running in today? The one we're in right here is 700 acres. That one over there across the road is about 350 to 400, I think. That's a lot of ground. So here on the screen we can see the ground that Matt and the four other combines have covered today. They've gone across 700 acres. The gray square in the center there is where the uh, part of the farm's tobacco crop and hemp crop was this year and next year this will all go into corn or the tobacco will shift over and cover some of the ground that was cut today. Yeah I'm not sure if we'll 
lifting tobacco in this field again, or just in a different spot, or maybe a totally different field. But this wall, this field will definitely be corn next year. So did the combine start way down on this uh, this tip over here? And then we work? started up here uh, uh, yesterday evening, okay. and then this morning we started in these long rows in this big field. So you've covered quite a bit of ground today. We actually had to leave this spot right here in the middle because it was really green. So that's interesting that it shows the uh, where you still need to come back and pick it up. Yep. like this where it's just so dusty and it's hard to see the combines can you actually track them on the screen and see where they're at as well yeah shows a little black dot and then their name above it but it's kind of delayed a couple seconds so I wouldn't go by that if you're trying not to hit somebody <laughs> right <laughs> so we can see the three combines and your number four coming across here Right here, I guess, is kind of the row shutoff on the drill where you can see how the straw has dissipated over the summer, but now you're just going to slice right through it and spread it back out on the field. enjoyed spending time up in the cab of this John Deere S790 combine harvesting 45 feet of soybeans at a time with Matt. My friends at Welker Farms on YouTube harvested their wheat crop this year with a combine fitted on LSW floater tires and they nicknamed the combine B-spine and my friend Matt has been harvesting soybeans with the dust spine working through these drought conditions but the combine does a great job despite the tougher conditions and if you'd like to see more videos like this one i hope you'll consider subscribing to big tractor power youtube with over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action make sure to click on the notifications bell as well so you'll know when the next big tractor power video is released new videos are coming out almost every day from the channel if you have any questions or thoughts about this video, please leave them in the comment section below as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like to get a preview of what is coming up next on Big Tractor Power YouTube, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching. 